Hello, once again, um, Facebook. Um, I pray everyone is doing all right. And um, I'm coming before you today to the previous video I did, um, Barren to Fruitful. Once I complete the video, um, today I'm going to do an extension within that of the testimony. Um, so last video I left off, got pregnant, you know, I had my baby girl. And the Lord healed me from endometriosis. That was of the testimony. So the next testimony is during the pregnancy. So when I became pregnant, so I, I'd said before, you know, the Lord told me that I was pregnant before I even did a test. So after he told me, I waited about two months. <laughs> I waited about two months and then I went to the doctor and she came and said, yep, you're pregnant. And it wasn't a surprise to me. I was kind of, um, I was like, oh man. But during the pregnancy, I had a lot, a lot, a lot of um, <clears throat> health issues and health scares. Um, within the first, I would say three months, my body went through, it was as if my body wanted to reject the pregnancy. And in the back of my mind, you know, I kept having this thought that what if it's ectopic, you know, because, you know, I did have endometriosis. So what if this is ectopic? Again, forgetting that I was healed, right? But, you know, the enemy comes in um, to tell you a lie so you can stop believing the truth that God says, you know. And what I love about God is that when he speaks a thing, that's it. It is done. And it's just for us to believe it and for the manifestation to occur. So I was freaking out. I was thinking I had an ectopic pregnancy and, the, you know, the child was going to die. Um, lo and behold, went. It was not ectopic at all, by the grace of God. It was a legit pregnancy. So during the pregnancy, I ended up having kidney stones, gallstones, kidney stones in both kidneys, gallstones, I ended up with hypertension and that I ended up at the last bit of it had preeclampsia a lot right so at about I would say things were going on and while well, during the pregnancy and I was I was I was in pain every day I had pains in my body every day my hip bone felt like it was broken it it, it was it just took a toll on my body it's like my body was just it was not happy to be pregnant. It took a toll on my body. And I had times I had to come out of um, work early and I went on bed rest. So during the entire pregnancy, I was before God. I was in the face of God continually, consistently praying and asking him to just for wisdom and to help me get through this process. So it was when I was about five and a half to six months pregnant. I was home, I was getting ready for work, and still in pain, you know, but I'm pushing through. I was getting ready for work, and I, and I was eating breakfast, and all of a sudden I hiccuped, and as soon as I hiccuped, I started throwing up. Mind you, I did not throw up at all up until this point, and I started throwing up, and from the day of throwing up, I kid you not, I call her my weekend baby. Every single weekend, I was in the hospital from that point on from Friday to Sunday, every single weekend. It was as if Fridays was the day my body was just so, okay, I've had it, I need to reset. And I would be thrown up, I would be in pain, I would, the hypertension would be so high. My blood pressures would run from about anywhere from, let's see, where was it? Anywhere from like 160 up, over about 101, I would say. Let me see, 160. Yep, it would be like 160 for 101, and it would climb from there. So, needless to say, I endured a lot of headache, and I kid you not, I was continually praying because I was asking God for some refuge. So, in the hospital for months, every weekend I was in the hospital, and the kidney stones got worse because then the kidney became swollen. And then I started to retain water, so I started to swell. And my complexion started to be discolored. I almost matched this thing right here. It, it, I got so dark. Um, my lip got dark. 
my I was just it's like I would look like a big balloon I was just I was just starting to swell and through this all and the peace of God is if I if you get nothing from this video if you get nothing at all the peace of God ha, when you have trust in God and when you choose to believe what God says to you and you hold him to his word let me tell you nothing could shake you during this period of time I know I was being tested I know my faith was being tested and I chose to trust God because I said listen I'm pregnant you allowed it you're gonna keep me and you're gonna bring me through this because it's like I felt at points in time I felt like I was gonna die and the baby would die because so many negative things was going on with my body but my mind I kept my mind on God I wanted to scream my flesh wanted to scream cry out and worry and started to fret one thing the Lord kept reminding me the baby when I fret when I worry it affects the baby so I made sure to not worry even when I saw my blood pressure was going sky high the migraines were ridiculous my skin started changing color I'm retaining water I mean and so I went to the doctor they did the x-ray there were a good amount of kidney stones in my um, at the time of my left kidney and it was swollen but they said they cannot do it because the baby was too close and they were like it's too risky for them to do surgery because they could you know hit the baby and then god forbid so i had to endure i had to endure the swollen kidney i had to endure the pain and we I could not take any form of pain medication except tylenol and tylenol was very ineffective very ineffective so my daily routine was just keep my mind on god i was i was praying keep my mind on god and asking god to just give me the strength to go through this so after every day i was you know in the hospital every weekend kid you not i was throwing up more constantly now from the first day i started throwing up i could not stop i was throwing up nothing was staying down and because of the kidney every time the pain would take me i would throw up because it was so bad and there's nothing to be done and my blood pressure was still high and my, my <laughs> I was swollen. I was swollen. So it was about six and a almost seven, almost seven months. Almost a month. I was month seven. Um, I had to go to the doctor, like right on the cups of being seven months pregnant. I had to go to the doctor, and on my way to the doctor, you know, I kept seeing particles for a while and I knew my blood pressure was up. So I went to the doctor, the nurse checked out the blood pressure and she said, how are you feeling? And I said, I'm doing all right. And <clears throat> she checked it again and she said, how are you? You seen any particles or anything in there? I'm like, yeah, a little bit. She said, how's your head? I was like, I'm okay. I'm okay, it's a little headache, but I'm okay. She's like, are you eating? And I said, yes. And in my mind, I'm like, why is she asking me all these questions? She said, you know, the doctor's going to come and check your, your blood pressure for you, which never happens. Normally, she checks it. She tells me what it is. It's always been elevated during the pregnancy. It was always elevated. And then she would go and he would come and do whatever testing I need to be done. So he comes in, checks it. How are you feeling? Same questions. I'm like, I'm getting irritated right now because I'm like, okay, y'all asking me the same questions over and over again. I said, I'm fine. And he's like, yeah, any particles? Again, I said, I see a little, yes, I see little floaty things in my eyes every single day. I see them, they're there. So he says to me, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to labor and delivery. Go to labor and delivery right, right away and tell them that I sent you. And I'm like, okay. I was like, all right. So on my way, as soon as I got in the car, <clears throat> sorry, the Holy Spirit said to me, you're gonna, they're going to induce you to have the baby. Go home. And pack your get your bags. I had already I felt in my spirit to pack my overnight bag because I was getting really big, even though I knew it wasn't. And before this, I was I constantly asked the doctor, "Can you induce me?" Because it was getting so uncomfortable. It was very very uncomfortable, and the pains were too. It was just too much. And he kept telling me, "No, it's too early. It's too early." I, every time I visit, "Can you take her now?" <laughs> he tell me, "No, not yet." So I went. I went, um, so I went there and no, I was 35, correction, 35, I was 35, yep, on the cups of 35 weeks pregnant. So I went home, grabbed my bag, went to um, labor and delivery and every time the pain would take me from the kidney stone, I would be 
I would have to, I would be in tears. And the nurses sometimes, it's like they were, they don't know what to do because it was so, they're like, she sounds like she's in labor. But they didn't understand. I was in that much pain. I was in pain. So I got to labor and delivery. And I said, you know, my doctor told me to come. They prepped me a room. They put me in the room. And within an hour, he was there. They put me on the drip. They told me that you can't have anything else to eat. This was on a Thursday. They said, you can't have anything else to eat um, while you're here. They put me on the drip. Um, nothing to eat, nothing to drink. So I said, okay. So within an hour, he came and he said to me, did you know that your blood pressure, I, came, I think he said my blood pressure was 190 something over about 120. I looked at him and he's like, you could have died. I'm surprised you did not have a stroke. And I looked at him and in my head, I'm like, oh, no wonder why you didn't tell me. Because if you had told me, you thought I was going to freak out. And when he said, he said, you are at stroke level. So you can't have anything to drink. You can't have anything to eat. So I said, all I said was, okay. That's like, so okay. And he left the room and I started talking to God. And I just started giving God thanks. I started giving God thanks. I'm like, I could have died on the way to the hospital. I could have died at the doctor's office. I could have died right as I'm here, but you kept me. And I used that as even more oomph to keep my faith in God, to say, yes, you are with me. You are keeping me through in this pregnancy. All these health scares that I'm having, you're keeping me. You know, I was throwing up constantly. I mean, constantly throwing up constantly in the hospital, constantly in pain, constantly having migraines, body pain, everything. It was just all over the place. But I'm like, but I'm here. I could have gotten a stroke. I'm at stroke level right now. But still yet, I'm calm. My head is blazing, but I'm calm. So he left and the Lord had told me that they're going to induce the labor. So he, uh, he came back about an hour or so later. And he says to me that, I'm sorry, but you have preeclampsia, so we have to induce you immediately. Because at this point, your heart rate is dropping and the baby's oxygen is decreasing. <laughs> I looked at him. I'm like, God, what else? What else could possibly, like, seriously? I was like, seriously, this is happening right now. And I looked at him like, are you crazy right now? You're telling me. So I call my mother immediately and tell her they're going to induce me. So they, I got the Pitocin immediately for them to deliver and they got ICU, they set up ICU, I set a place for my, my daughter, just in case she comes out and she, something is terribly wrong. So while we were there, I started praying and asking God, let this baby be healthy. I don't care if she's coming early or she's forcing to come out, let her come healthy and let this also be a testimony of your greatness. And again, I go through the preeclampsia and everything, go through the Pitocin within two days, um, I was induced, the full, the full induction took place and she was born. And when she was born, she was a healthy, oh God, oh, oh, how many pounds was she? She was six pounds, six ounces. Yeah, she was a big kid. <laughs> if I had her in, she would have been over 10 pounds for full term for all the way to the 40 weeks. So she was about six pounds, six ounces. I uh, no, six pounds, 12 ounces. She wasn't, she was, you know, she was very tall. And the doctor was very surprised. He was very surprised that she came out and she was so healthy because the heart rate, my heart rate dipped constantly during the time of, you know, the Pitocin taking effect and her heart rate, I had to be on oxygen because I was losing oxygen. She was losing, it was just, it was something. And she was born healthy. You know, and after that, I had to be, I was still in another hospital because my blood pressure could not, was not, it was, it wouldn't be regulated. A year later, a year, the, the full year after a year of having her, I was still in the hospital and I was it, still in the hospital. Then I had to do three, oh gosh, I had to do two kidney surgeries and then I did the gallstone surgery and then I had to struggle with the high blood pressure because after the pregnancy it did not go away so I struggled with that for a while you know until you know God really started helping me to learn how to regulate it without going on medication but you know I just want to share the testimony with you guys um God is a healer you know and 
I am so honored to know him. I'm so humbled to know him, you know, and I'm guessing he's using this platform as a way to get to you, you know, to show you his goodness through my life because I'm just a vessel. We're just a vessel. And I'm honored to be used by God as a vessel to share this testimony with you. And I'm forever indebted to him because he didn't have to do any of these things. He didn't have to. He didn't have to keep me safe. He didn't have to protect me. You know, kidney scones gone through those surgeries where the kidney was swollen after pregnancy my kidney was so swollen both kidneys were infected oh my lord jesus but and guys i don't know who who's ever had a kid, kidney stones before the pain is ridiculous i mean i've never felt pain like that in my all my days the pain was ridiculous and i thought kidney was bad Kidney pain was bad until I got the gallstones. Lord Jesus, those gallstones had you shaking like you have seizure on the floor. I always thought I was going to die. I was like, I'm going to die and my daughter is here. And nobody's going to find her for a day. You know, the devil just playing tricks on me. I'm like, she's going to be here for days and I'm going to be rotting on the floor. <laughs> I'll be rotten on the floor. Nobody's gonna find her for days. I always like these bad things. The devil just keep planting these bad imaginations in my head. But I thank God that none of it came to pass. But all those surgeries that I had to go through, even after pregnancy, and then after my daughter was, I'm sorry, this is a little after my daughter was born the first year, she was constantly sick constantly sick. I would be crying. I'm like, God, what is going on? Like, heal my child. And that's another testimony. I'm going to give you a snippet of it just to get it out there. She was constantly sick. I mean, constantly sick. And I was asking the Lord, please, like, what's going on? Heal my, I was, she had roseola. She had, oh God, diarrhea. She had so many different things. She kept, she just, and for the first year, it was very rough for the first year of her life. I had so much, I saved all the discharge papers from the hospital because she was constantly, if it was not the fever is too high, if she was not dehydrated, she was, con she was, oh my God, it was just so, 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 so much. And she's a breastfed baby. So she, you know, I didn't expect any of this to happen, but for one year, and I remember praying, I said, God, the day she, I declared actually, I declared the day she reaches her first birthday, she will no longer be sick no more hospitals no more nothing she will no longer be sick and let me tell you on the first <laughs> her first year her birthday since her birthday i can count on one hand how many times she's been sick one hand and now she's almost six years old so god answered that prayer. oh jesus is so sweet oh oh my god god is so 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 good but so share my testimony. I encourage you. I pray to encourage you guys. I pray you watch until the end. I pray to encourage you guys. Keep striving for Jesus. Keep loving on him because he loves you more than you even love him. He loves you more than you love yourself. He wants the best for you more than you even know that you want for yourself. Continue to trust him. Continue to love him. Continue to serve him. And if you want more of him, ask and he will give it to you. Anything that you need ask the word of god said you ask you have not because you ask not and he also said ask and you shall receive then he also said if you ask anything in my name without faith wavering it is done unto you so i pray in the name of jesus that this testimony blesses you and that it opens up within you any barren land that is not of god and barrenness is not of god so any land in you that is dried or withered I command it to open now in the mighty name of Jesus and let the rivers of water of life just overflow and overpour in you as you keep striving, as you keep serving God. Be blessed.